Hello YouTubers, Bill Griffith here. So in my previous video, I walked you through step by step of creating a uh, ODM on cloud uh, rule project and then executing that for pizza. Uh, what I'm going to do now is walk through rule chaining, the ability to have rules out of order and have the rule engine uh, sort that out for you. So start it with a simple Java model. A driver, uh, someone that's wanting insurance, they have first name, last name, number of accidents, risk level, etc., things like that, uh, and a vehicle. And then the vehicle is just another job object, it's going to have, you know, make model and how much it costs. And then from that information, the driver and the vehicle, uh, the rules will then price the premium for that insurance quote. And you see this stuff was all just generated automatically. Okay, so now I created a, a new rule project here, standard stuff. It's uh, got one uh, rule package. It's got a rule flow, which just calls this rule package. These are kind of, um, you know, just default rules. Uh, so the first rule is going to set the discount if the driver's risk level is senior. So if they're a senior citizen, then I'm going to give them a 10% discount, right? And that's just a standard uh, rule here set, and I do control space, and then I can say the premium of the quote, the quote that I pass in as a variable to a number, what's that number? It's gonna be the existing premium amount of the quote that's passed in times, right, 0 0.9, which is the 90% or the 10% discount that is. And then I just do some debugging here to make it easy to see what's going on with the print statement. Okay, so again, notice that this is Setting a discount if the status of the driver is senior. Okay, I'll save that. Now I have another rule. Notice it's below this, so it happens actually after. It's going to check the age of the driver to set the senior citizen discount. Okay, now let's go back and see uh, my variable set, or uh, let's see the uh, decision operation. Uh, standard thing, follow the wizard here and it'll create this, or follow my video over here to walk through how this is done. But effectively, we have a uh, quote and a um, the driver. And these are input-output parameters to make it easy to test. Uh, and so that's all, that, uh, that's all that we're doing there. So now to test this, I want to run this. If you just do run as a decision operation, uh, it'll say uh, null. It won't say this uh, because it needs a configuration. So then once you run that first time, then it'll put this in here for you, and then you just go in and configure this. These will be empty uh, or red. You then can modify these and specify some dummy data. So uh, before I can create the driver, I need to have a vehicle because that's its last uh, argument. All right. So notice I have the fully qualified path name here. I have it here as well. And so my vehicle is a Dodge Ram. It is, uh, say, 52,000, uh, and then the arguments here need to match up to the constructor. So my name's Bill Griffith. Let's say I'm 70. I've had three accidents, and notice I did not set my risk level. It's a null string. And then my deductible is 500, and then I point to this here, right? Now, it also needs a quote variable, which is just saying start the quote at 100, and have no notes, which matches up to my um, matches up to my arguments over here, right? The driver here. Notice the signature and the order of that. Okay, so now uh, and then my rule flow just calls the pricing rules. So now I can go back over here. Let's clear the console, and uh, this is what happens when you first run it. And then I'm going to do run. And you'll see that this rule fired, right? It says it right here. But notice that this rule did not because this rule gets executed first. And the problem is that value was empty when I pass it in, right? When I, in my constructor for my test, I did not have a risk level. And so this is common. You might have rules out of order. Now I could rearrange these and the default uh, rule execution is um, is the fast path, 
right? Now I can change the setting of these. So let's make it a sequential rule. And let's change the rule execution to sequential. So let's go to my first rule here and I want this rule to uh, fire after the status. So I always want the status to be higher. So I'm gonna make it a, uh, go into that rule. And I'm gonna make this rule always fire first. So I'm gonna set it to 50. So a higher number and that's gonna set the status. Then I'm gonna to go to this rule and let's say make it a 10, right? And now I save that, Control S, sorry, Command S, Command S, Command S, and now I'm gonna do run. And now back over to the console, you'll see that all the rules applied correctly, right? And it did because I set the, the rule execution flow of these rules. Now the challenge is what happens if one depends on the other or I don't have these in the right order. I can also use the rule execution, the Reedy algorithm to do this for me. So let's go back to this. Let's uh, set the status, the priority to nothing. So empty, um, save that, do the same thing for this one. Set it to nothing, save that. And uh, now, you know, when I test it, you'll see that it also goes back to the previous state, which is just the first one. So now I'm gonna change this rule execution, um, rule set to be the Reedy Plus. And this will allow you to have rule chaining. One rule causes another rule to fire. So then I do Command S to save, and now I'm gonna run it again. Same result. Well, the reason that is, is because I need to tell my bomb to recheck the rules if one of the properties changes. And specifically, I want the risk level. Now, the Reedy algorithm is, um, you know, faster than any other kind of rule dependency, uh, but obviously sequential rules are going to be much faster if you can order the rules uh, in the logical order that they should go. But if one rule calls... Another rule, so A implies B, and B calls C, and C updates A, then you kind of get circular uh, problems. So what we say is that this rule, uh, if this property changes, update object state, then recheck the rules. So setting that property for my bomb, business object model, now I'm going to rerun, and you'll see that the rules worked correctly. And that's the power of these rules in different orders. So you can see these rules, right? Now remember, this rule will not, um, this rule cannot fire unless this rule happened first. That's the challenge. And so in programming languages, you normally just sort this code in the right order. But when you've got thousands of rules, then getting them in the right order is, is a complicated endeavor. And so the Reedy, uh, algorithm gives you the ability um, to let the engine sort through that for you. Thank you.